Hey, what is going on guys? Extra Fusion here and today I'm going to be ranking all nine of the Walking Dead seasons from worst to first. Now this is my opinion. This is not based on how the community feels about it. This is not how the majority of people feel about it. This is how I feel about it. And there's a certain amount of things that I include when determining what's the best season. First things first, characters, the development, their acting, stuff like that. That's important. The action, is the directing good? Is the editing good? The atmosphere, which includes soundtrack and the setting, the locations and such, as well as the most important thing, which is the main plot and stories, so the actual writing that's included within the seasons. That's probably the most important thing, but all those other things I mentioned are pretty important as well. Let me know your ranking of the seasons in the comment section below. If you disagree with me, don't freak out and dislike the video. Instead, just be civil about it and tell me why you disagree with me. Don't forget to subscribe either, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. Let's get into this. Coming in at the number 9 spot, my least favorite season in The Walking Dead history, it's got to be season 1. Now let me preface this by saying I do not hate any season. Even this season, even the season that's in the 8th place or 7th place, I don't hate any of them. I think they are all very good in their own ways. And that's why I'm going to go through all the pros and cons for each and every season that I go through. So for season 1, I'll start with the pros because there are a decent amount of great things. First of all, the first two episodes are fantastic. Days Gone By and Guts are really solid episodes. Two of my, like, they're in my top 30 of all time. And there's like a lot of episodes. There's like 130 episodes. So with those episodes being in the top 30, that's pretty good. It's also the start of the series. This is what started it all. You got to give it some credit for being the first season. You have to grab the people's attention. And they did a pretty good job at that. The locations were also pretty awesome. Atlanta, the whole thing, that was Atlanta. But they only really did stuff in Atlanta for like two episodes. Then they were at that little camp for the rest of the season. And CDC was kind of cool, I guess. The Shane, Laurie, and Rick dynamic I was interested in, and the Rick reuniting with his family scene still goes down in history as one of the best and most emotional scenes in the entire history of The Walking Dead. But then there's a lot of bad things about this season too. It gets kind of boring at some points. A lot of the stuff is forgettable. A lot of the season's forgettable. If I go back and rewatch the season or the series, I only watch the first two episodes, sometimes the finale. That's about it. The rest of the episodes I don't want to watch. The Vatos gang was the most boring group they've ever introduced in the show. I had no interest in them. That whole storyline was a waste, I felt like. I don't know. I had no interest. I mean, maybe because it wasn't in the comics, I lost interest. But there's been a lot of non-comic book things in the show that's been fantastic. This is not one of them. The budget was obviously pretty low. You know, a lot of the Walker kills. A lot of the Walkers, how they acted, was also just strange. And not how walkers should act and i feel like that was mainly because of what frank darabont was trying to do he was trying to make it different than the comics and that obviously prefaced in season two and season three and then i think scott gibble kind of put it back on track to being more closely related to the comics in season four it was also very short i mean i don't want to make it lose points because it's short but you gotta take that into account a little bit people say oh but it's short but sweet but i don't think it's that sweet either aside from two episodes so Season 1, unfortunately, has to come in the last place. Next up, I got Season 2 in the number 8 spot. So, no, it's not going to go in chronological order, just straight up the list. No, this is just for the first two ones on the list. Season 2, to me, is just like another season, which I'll talk about it. It's a necessary evil. That's what I like to call it. As long as... The story is progressing the characters i do feel like it's still important like a lot of the character development in this season is so important and so necessary for the future of the show but it was done in such a boring dull and slow way to the point where this season just got really really boring really quickly so i'll get into some of the pros before i get into the cons sophia walking out of the barn that whole scene that really the whole episode was fantastic second half of the season overall was phenomenally better is phenomenally even a word i don't know but it was a lot better than the first half the randall conflict i was interested in it was very different than what we've seen before it was the humans actually having conflict with other humans for the first time in a long time because it's been all about walkers before this you know a few different problems like they had the vatos group but they really didn't end up being a threat in the end right the rick killing those two guys in the barn his first kills of the series first human kills of the series awesome the last two episodes shane's death that whole scene just shane overall the character of shane made this season if shane wasn't in the series 
and he was just out of the, the season, then I honestly think season two would have been last place and season one would have been right here. Shane made this season. Shane made season two a lot better than what it would have been without him. And like I said, another good another good thing would be the fact that it was just good development. You had really good development for a lot of characters. Glenn, uh, Lori, Rick, Carl, Shane, obviously. Um, Daryl, Carol. A lot of these characters, really good development that will end up being important in later seasons. Then obviously the negatives, very slow, very low budget, extremely lower budget compared to the last season. You might be wondering, why does budget even matter? It is very important when it comes to the overall action sequences and, and, and set pieces. You can't do bigger things when you don't have a bigger budget. This season was very smaller scale compared to a lot of other seasons that we've seen, which they made it work, yes, but not in a way that I would have rather have seen it. And it's a small cast, but it's still dragged out. With another season, I'll explain it. When something's dragged out, I'm able to forgive it when it's a large cast and there's a lot that they have to develop, a lot of different stories. There really wasn't that many stories or really a big cast at all in this season, but it was still dragged out. That was my major issue with season two. So it comes in at the number eight spot. And coming in at the number seven spot, I've got season seven. Season seven is just like season two in the fact that it's a necessary evil, but I think this season is more of a necessary evil than season two is. So season seven did some really important stuff for the series in terms of world building. This season built up the universe like we've never seen before. I mean, for starters, they introduced over four new groups that will all be somewhat important to the story. You had the Kingdom, you had the Saviors, you had Oceanside, and you had the Scavengers. Four groups, four communities being completely introduced. And then you still had Alexandria and Hilltop being developed over time. So that's six total groups slash communities that were being developed in one season. When you have something like that, you have to drag it out. You can't rush stories because then you're going to have parts of the stories that are not complete and it's just not going to feel complete. And that's why I think that season seven is much more of a necessary evil than season two is. You had some fantastic stuff this season as well. Like the premiere, the premiere was one of the best episodes in the entire Walking Dead history. The whole Glenn and, and Abe getting their heads bashed in, very emotional, very sad, but a beautifully done episode. The directing was amazing. The writing, the symbolism, the soundtrack. Soundtrack was huge in this season. It's amazing soundtrack. One of the best seasons for a soundtrack in particular. Negan, the character of Negan, he made this season. Just like Shane made season two, Negan made season seven. Freaking loved his comedy that he brought to the series. I loved everything about his character, and I'm still loving it to this day. Carl and Negan, their scenes together were pretty cool too in episode 7, I like that. Overall, the season just had a lot more comedy, which is kind of weird because it started so awful. Like, it started like, you know, and awful in terms of um, depressing, like someone getting their head bashed in, right? Two of them. But the way they introduced comedy to kind of remedy that awful depressiveness was really well done in my opinion. And I think the comedy did a very good thing to the season because it was very depressing. So obviously it kind of um, combated the depressiveness of the premiere and kind of how that tiptoed into the rest of the season. Uh, episode 8, the end of it particular, beautiful scene when they were all reuniting. I liked how the structure of the season was done. I liked how the first half was all depressing and kind of like the group being under Negan's rule and they're just accepting the fact that yes, Negan is the new leader now. And then it, mid season finale hits. And then the next season, or the next half of the season is completely rising up against Negan. It's all about, we need to rise up against this motherfucker. We need to take his ass out, and we need to take our lives back. I love that. Shiva, awesome. The Winslow Walker, awesome. The finale was really intense, really, really, really intense. Really well done episode, in my opinion. The action was pretty good, too. Then we have some negatives. They cut out a lot of the gore after Glenn, Glenn's death. Um, I don't know if that was because of fan feedback or anything, but people, I don't know, they were complaining about the gore, and then all of a sudden, the rest of the season just was very low on the gore. I mean, look at Fat Joey. Remember Fat Joseph and um, the mid-season premiere, or mid-season finale, when Daryl took him out? They didn't show any of that. They just showed Daryl smacking some, the air, basically. We could just assume it was the air, which, um, you know, the gore is a huge part of the series, so them kind of not doing much with it this season was kind of disappointing, but they definitely brought it back in season 8, so it's all good. A couple of very poor 
episodes, in my opinion, poor in terms of writing and, and directing and all that stuff. I would, not completely, but episode 3, 5, 11, and 14 in particular, was not a fan of either of those four episodes. Um, rough CGI in a few instances, episode 10 with the green screen, when Rick was standing up on the junkyard, uh, and the episode 12 is here. I'm not one to complain about just some CGI deer. I don't really care if it's that bad. It's just one little scene, but it's still a negative. I still got to put it there. And this is a very strange nitpick, but sometimes I feel like the sound was off for this season. And it kind of tiptoed a little bit in the season eight as well, where like when they were, you kill a walker, it sounded like they were stabbing cardboard, which it usually would sound like more like you were stabbing a watermelon. But for some reason, it just, it sounded weird. I, no one ever said the same nitpick. I'm the only one who ever said anything about it. I've never seen anyone complain about it. But it just kind of bothered me sometimes. And sometimes the gunshot noises were kind of off. Like Rick's revolver, you take the noise of the revolver in this season compared to how it was in previous seasons. And all of a sudden, the noise of it changed. I, I don't know. But it's still a great season. I think it deserves a lot more respect than what it gets. It did a lot of great things for the series. A lot of build up for the future of the series, so I'm glad we got season 7 the way it was. It just could have been a little bit better in a few different instances, but like I said, it's a necessary evil. Coming in at the number 6 spot, I've got season 3. Season 3 at the time was fantastic. This is the season that I actually got into the show. My first episode I ever watched was the premiere of season 3. Well, the first episode I watched live, actually. I watched the season 2 finale a little bit after it came out. first episode I watched live was the season 3 premiere. I fell in love with it during episode 4, one of the best episodes of the entire series when Lori died. That episode was emotional, action-packed, intense, beautifully done, good soundtrack, all of it was just incredible. That got me into the show. It's really the first season with a full-on, decent-sized budget, and you can tell that it was there because of the battles and the action that they had. It wasn't, you know, up to par with later seasons, but still had a lot of great action sequences like the mid-season finale and even a little bit in the mid-season premiere episode 10 had a pretty cool battle as well i thought the action in the season definitely spiced it up a bit the premiere had a lot of walker action walker action was in the season too which you always love some walker action as well the location of the prison was awesome it was one of my favorite part parts of the comics so to see it on screen was pretty awesome the character of the governor merle returning awesome two characters that really did make the season the mid-season finale, like I said, was a really good episode. I loved the fight between Michonne and the governor. I loved Daryl and Merle reuniting and kind of looking at each other and being forced to fight. That was cool. Finale ended beautifully despite being a little underwhelming. The finale was underwhelming, but I liked how it ended with them all coming together and bringing the people from the Woodbury community to the prison. I really liked it. Great soundtrack. It's a great soundtrack goes for like all season, so I never had any season where I think the soundtrack was bad. Seasons soundtrack's always been fantastic. Bear McCrary, you do a fantastic job with soundtracks. And of course, the return of Morgan with the episode Clear, which was one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. Fantastic. Well written. Such a good episode. And that's all I really could say about the goods. There's a couple of bads. They tried to go way too far from the comics, and I looked at some behind the scenes stuff. There was a lot of behind the scenes problems with this season particular with Glenn Mazzaro having problems with AMC and all this, you know, budget problems, debates over budget, and that kind of forced them to do things that, you know, I really would rather them not have done, like killing off Andrea, but in the end, I think it all turned out to be just okay. Um, of course, with Scott Gimple becoming showrunner, he definitely put things back on track. They were just doing way too many things that were way too far from the comics, and I guarantee you, if Glenn Mazzaro stayed as a showrunner, we would not probably even be with the Whispers right now. We'd probably be with like a completely different story arc. They'd probably be in like um, New Mexico with some cure, with some scientist guys. They would have probably just gone completely off track from the comics, I guarantee. So I'm glad they kind of kept on track because as a comic book fan, I really wanted them to follow some of the core comic book stories, and I'm glad they did. And like I said, finale was a little underwhelming, but... Either way, how it ended, how it wrapped up, was still well done, in my opinion. I think there's a lot of writing flaws here and there, too. Some dialogue problems between some episodes. But that's all I really have to say about Season 3. It's not a bad season, but it's not a fantastic season either. It's just kind of in the middle. So that comes in at number 6. 
Coming in at number five, I've got season five. Now, I know this is probably an unpopular opinion. Season five tends to be one of the most beloved seasons in The Walking Dead history. People always put this in their top three, top two, sometimes their best. And I understand season five is very, very good. It has a lot of good points to it. But there's also a certain amount of points in the season that kind of ruined it for me. So I'll go over the pros first. The Hunter story arc, fantastic. The first three episodes, some of the best three consecutive episodes in the entire history of The Walking Dead. The Alexandria introduction in episode 11 and 12, fantastic. I love Alexandria and I love that whole storyline that they did with Alexandria in the last couple episodes of the season. Rick, you know, Rick saving Jesse from Pete was also pretty awesome. The character of Abraham, he was like how Shane was the season two. Abraham was such a fun character this season, um, especially with the development he got. Gory as fuck. Very gory. This is one of the goriest seasons I think we've ever gotten. You had stuff like the Noah's death. You had Rick and them killing the hunters brutally. You had people eating other people in, in the earlier episodes. Just a lot of gore, and that's fantastic. I love gore, and I'm very happy this season was probably one of the goriest, I would say, in the entire series. And very good character development, especially in episode 10, which a lot of people don't like that episode, but I think it was a very well-developed episode. It was just a very good season for developing side characters, too. It started to develop the supporting characters that we don't really see that much, like Carol. Carol was getting a lot of development this season, more than she's ever gotten before, which was fantastic. Um, and then we go into the bad, because I think what makes the season not as good for me is episode four to episode like nine basically that kind of time period i was not a fan of the dawn in a hospital arc i had no interest in it i think it was a waste of time the only thing it did was kind of lead up to beth's death and that was about it episode five was good though because it developed abraham and and that whole group pretty well episode six it wasn't horrible but it was still part of the hospital arc episode seven still had a lot of hospital arc stuff i didn't really care about it, episode 8, you know, it, it, Brett's death was shocking, so that made it, you know, somewhat interesting, because it, you know, made a lot of interesting reactions for people, but that's about it, I, I had no interest in it, Tyrese's death was also really weird, I didn't like it, it's always kind of Beth's death, like I said, they just were weird deaths that didn't really fit their characters, in my opinion, and I think they could have gone out in much better ways, on much better terms, but overall, season 5 still did a lot for the series, and I still like the season a lot, so it comes in at number five. And coming in at the number four spot, I've got season four. Notice that a lot of these spots are like in unison with their season number. Like spot five was for season five, spot seven was for season seven, spot four is now for season four. That's a coincidence, but I just find that kind of interesting. Season four was my favorite season for a little bit of time, and then it's obviously changed over time. And it's still a fantastic season, in my opinion. Very underrated. People put season four at, like, their lower points, usually. But I think season four is one of the most underrated seasons out there. So, first things first, the sickness arc was amazing. I love that. It was a completely new arc that we have never seen in the comics. And they decided to fit it into the show. And it worked perfectly. A lot of people thought it was just filler and it was kind of worthless, like why can't we just get the governor right away? But no, I thought it was really awesome, especially developing characters as well, like you had characters that needed the sickness story arc to develop themselves. Herschel, it led to Herschel's death, this was the last time Herschel did something amazing for the group and it led so perfectly into his death. I liked how the season started off with everyone being kind of comfortable in their house, uh, the prison of course. and. Rick didn't even want to bring his gun out, but Herschel's like, no, you have to stay safe. Don't let your guard down. That was kind of like the, the main theme of the season. Never let your guard down. They let it down for a little bit, and boom, the sickness hits, and everyone's dying, and this crazy shit goes on. The episode three herd scene, when there was the giant herd, that was fantastic. First time we've seen a herd of that caliber. I mean, we've seen the season two herd was pretty big, but this one was way bigger. So I thought that was an awesome episode. The episode five... Herschel badassery, amazing. Rick and Carl taking out that large group of walkers with fully automatic rifles. In episode 5, it was an awesome father-son bonding scene. And then, of course, the mid-season finale being the best episode in the series, in my opinion, with the governor attacking the prison with his new army. Herschel's death, beautiful episode, beautiful way to, for a character to go out. 
Rick's speech was emotional. The soundtrack in this episode was incredible. The action was some of the best action we've had in the entire series. Then you go into the second half, which the second half is definitely not as good as the first half in my opinion, but it's still pretty good. You have the Claimers, which is a very interesting new group that was in the comics, but it was a very more developed in the show. Um, you had the Carol, Lizzie, and Mika story, which ended with one of the most impactful scenes to Carol ever. Rick versus Joe in the finale with the Claimer douchebags almost raping Carl, and then Rick biting out Joe's throat incredible and then of course the introduction of the hunters in the finale the only negatives i have honestly was the governor episodes weren't like they weren't awful but they felt like we didn't need two episodes of that they could have definitely lowered that into like one episode maybe and we could have gotten more stuff at the prison i think i don't think they had to be a whole two episodes episode 12 which is called still was only good in the last few minutes. The rest of it felt pointless of Beth going around for just some booze. I think it's an underrated episode for the last few minutes of the episode, but the rest of it was just, uh, it, I, I didn't feel like I needed it basically, but whatever, season four comes in at the number four spot. And we're here, the top three best seasons in The Walking Dead in my opinion. Number three is season eight. Well, this is gonna be a controversial one because, and I don't under, honestly, I will live my life never understanding why people say season 8 is the worst season. They say it's the worst, they say it's the second worst, they say it's trash. And honestly, I never can understand why. I will never in all my life, no matter what argument you bring me, will understand why people think this is the worst season. I listen, I'm open to understanding, you know, why you might think it's the worst, but I will just never understand it the same way a lot of other people do. Let's get into the pros. First of all, it's action-packed. Easily the most action-packed season we've ever had in the entire series. So anyone who likes action, they're going to love this season. It's action-packed. That's great. The payoff after Season 8 world-building and setup. It definitely did pay off that entire setup that Season 7 was. The first four episodes were very good for consecutive episodes, in my opinion. Showing the other side of the battle was awesome i love the episodes we had at the sanctuary seeing negan in charge and the whole situation between negan and simon minor character deaths kind of giving them purpose like francine eric and tobin characters that we don't really care that much about but it's still interesting to see them die and i like how they show it off rather than having it happen off screen the bombing of alexandria one of the most iconic parts of the comics i'm going to explain that in the con section as well though because there are a few cons about that the group coming together in the second half was beautiful. I loved how they were all kind of split up in the first half, and then when Alexandria got hit and Kingdom got hit, they all did come together at the hilltop. And the whole episode for Carl's death was very necessary. I'm glad they gave it to Carl's death. And Carl's death, I'm going to talk about the cons as well as the pros, because there's things I liked about it and things I didn't like about it. Things I liked about it, I liked the fact that they did it in the first place. I didn't like it at first, but as time went on, I realized it did a lot of good things for the series. The way how it kept Negan alive is great. It developed Rick and Michonne and Judith and all these other characters substantially. And I just wasn't a big fan of Chandler Riggs acting. And I'm really glad we got Matt Lentz as Henry to do his part in season nine to take Carl's storyline. Unfortunately, they decided to kill him off, but whatever. That's a you know, situation we'll talk about when we get to season nine on the list. Carl's letter to Negan and Rick reading them out loud in episode 15 was beautiful um episode 10 was really well character development for characters like jadis and simon morgan going clear mode again great soundtrack incredible as always eugene helping the group in the finale very glad he did that rick versus negan three goddamn times i'm really glad we got three times to for them to fight each other i'd say the one in episode 12 was their best fight episode 16 was also pretty good Episode 8, I think, could have been a little longer, but other than that, it was still a pretty awesome fight nonetheless. Um, overall, this season, I think, just gets hated on more than I think it should, and it's unfortunate because I love the season. I think it's got a lot of good things. It's also got a couple of bad things. I'm glad not all the saviors died either. I'm glad they kept some of them alive for the upcoming season 9. Um, we'll get into the, the, the cons now some cases of bad directing and bad editing only a few cases though i don't think 
every action scene was bad. Episode 2 in particular had very good action. But then you have episodes like 1, 3, sometimes in episode 4, episode 16 at some points, where you can tell the directing and the choreography for some of the fight scenes were not that good. You couldn't really see some of the stuff that was going on. It was a little not well done, but episode 2 and 13 in particular, incredible. Even episode 12 was really good in terms of action. The bombing of Alexandria should have had someone get blown up. I know that's like such a small thing, but that happened in the comics, and I, I just wish we saw it in the show. I don't care what character, any character, just having get blown up by a grenade would have been pretty cool to see. Carl's death should have had more prior buildup. I do, like I said, I enjoyed Carl's death, how it was done, but he should have, we should have just not had Negan want to kill uh, Carl in the finale of season seven. So that would have made more sense. I understand why Carl changed from wanting to kill Negan in season seven to not wanting to kill him. It's because of the whole sanctuary when he was Carl was at the sanctuary. He saw that there was good people there. He saw that Negan didn't kill Carl even after killing two of his men. He just left him alive. And he even killed Spencer who was trying to kill Rick. So he just understood that them fighting is not going to help anyone. All it's going to do is just kill more people. That was kind of where Carl's mind was at. I just wish we saw that and wish we saw that be built up. But I feel like they kind of made a last minute decision and that's why it wasn't built up the same way that I wanted it to, unfortunately. And last thing that I don't like about this season is Oceanside, very underused, very underused. The development they got in season seven was great and all, but they didn't put Oceanside into actual development until the season nine, first few episodes of season nine. Season 8, they were completely worthless. There was no point of them having them even in the season. Like, why the hell did they have that scene where Enid killed Natanya? That was had no importance to the story at all. And that never was paid off. you think they would have been pissed at Enid, but no, they just left her there. I don't know. That was just weird. The whole Oceanside thing in this season was weird. But either way, Season 8, I think it's incredible. Much better than what people say. So it comes in at number 3 spot. And coming in at the number 2 spot, I've got the most recent season, which is, of course, Season 9. I think season 9 gets a lot of praise, and it deserves praise because it is a fantastic season. Is it this return of the show? Is it this, oh, the season, the show's finally good now? No, no, it's been good forever in my opinion. I think season 8 was incredible, just the season before it was just behind this. But I do think it deserves praise because it is a very, very good season. First of all, better directing and editing. They definitely got better directors and editing skills within this season. I could tell by a lot of the sequences. Aaron losing an arm, making him more like Comic Rick. I love that. The Oceanside storyline, the first few episodes, love that. Maggie and Egan seen in episode 5, beautiful. Herschel and Shane returning, very happy they did that. Rick's final episode overall was one of the best episodes in the entire series. Older Judith, seeing older Henry. The whole time jump I loved. I loved how they went into a whole six years down the line. It felt like a completely new show, and that's why I liked it, because it was new, it was different, you know? That was awesome. The soundtrack, beautiful as always. The whispers, the buildup, the creepiness they had was awesome. The characters of Lydia, Alpha, and Beta, fantastic three characters. The whisperer action scenes in episode 8, in episode 9, in episode 13, fantastic. Jesus' death scene, one of the most shocking scenes in the entire history of The Walking Dead, and I absolutely loved how they did it. So awesome with the whisperer dodging and stabbing him. The pike scene, Beautifully done. I'll talk about the choices on the pikes. I didn't like those choices, but the scene itself was beautifully done. The soundtrack, the directing, how they showed the heads, beautiful. The fair, awesome. The snow in the finale, awesome. And the overall just world building into the movies, and probably going to lead into the movies, I would assume, really well done. This season is incredible. I love every second of it. Then we have some negatives. The battle in episode 4 and 5 between, you know, Carol and some of the other survivors versus those straggler saviors should have been shown it was not it was just skipped over like carol shot someone in the end of episode four and then next thing you know episode five they were all dead and then rick found the aftermath we never saw what happened there and that kind of bothered me henry shouldn't have died i'm just gonna say that henry shouldn't have died i didn't like the choices for the pikes overall i made a video about this i think the choices were not impactful as they should have been and some of the characters that died didn't really get proper development beforehand. Like, Tara and Enid should have had more development if you were going to kill them off. I still think Tara shouldn't have been killed off at all. Enid being killed off, I understand a little bit. I do think it did good development for Alden, and it will do good development. But who the hell is Tara developing? Tara had no, like, real connection to anyone in the past season or two. She had connections with people back then, 
but recently it's been like no one really so i don't really understand that minor characters not appearing often i feel like angela kang and her writing which i love her i like her writing a lot but one thing she likes to do is she seems like she just decided to focus on only a few characters this season rather than a lot more supporting characters and i like when season eight seven six those other seasons they focused a lot on ma minor characters as well as the major characters and i feel like minor characters just didn't get much development at all this season and last thing where the hell is oceanside in the, after the time jump oceanside just decided to not appear until the fair and we only had rachel come back where's sydney where's beatrice where's all the other characters i don't know but that's honestly all only negatives i have everything else is just fantastic love this season but it's not the best the best is coming up next and coming at the number one spot it's a season that i honestly don't think will ever be beaten and i really hope season 10 beats it because i am looking forward to this whisper of war but season six is just so, so fantastic from start to finish. Let's go through everything. So the premiere, beautiful episode, large scale, that whole entire sequence with the giant herd. Overall, just a no way out storyline that went on for like the first nine episodes of the season. Amazing. The, the, um, the whole starting with the hurting the whispers, the season starting with the hurting the whispers, and then the season ended with the groups actually being herded by the saviors. I love that symbolism. JSS, that whole episode with Carol killing the wolves, awesome. The Morgan episode, kind of boring, but it was very well written. One of the best written episodes in the entire series. Soundtrack, one of the best seasons for soundtrack, like I said. Season 7 was also very good. This is one of the best as well. Episode of No Way Out, one of the best episodes in the entire series. I'd say the second best, right, right behind Too Far Gone. Episode 10's comedy and chill nature. I liked how they brought into that comedy and chill nature of episode 10 after a little bit of a time jump. The Hilltop and the Saviors introduction was really well done, especially the Hilltop introduction. Episode 12 was very intense, really showed the dark side of the group with killing all those Saviors in their sleep. Negan's introduction, beautiful. Second half of the season, honestly, not one less than good episode. Every episode in the second half was either good or amazing there was no bad episode or not even less than there's no okay episode in the second half every episode was fantastic the only episodes in this entire season that i think was like okay or, or less than okay was like maybe episode five and, and six maybe seven as well that's about it every other episode was fantastic had amazing scenes had amazing sequences had amazing action very action-packed season as well I loved it. I loved Negan Instruction. I loved all that. Only negatives. The Glenn fake out was kind of unnecessary. I still don't understand the point of it. It didn't really bother me that much, but at the same time, I was like, what was the point of that? I still never really can understand to this day. The cliffhanger. I didn't like the cliffhanger at first, right? I don't think anyone did. But in the end, I liked how it turned out and how season seven handled it. Now, I don't think it was, you know, Gimple's decision to do this. I do think AMC forced them to do it, but at the same time, I just, I wish it was done a little bit differently, but after seeing how it was done, and when you binge it, it's really not that horrible. Obviously, it was waiting six months that ruined it, but in the end, they gave us such a beautiful episode in season seven that I just, I had no problem with the cliffhanger, and episode, the season six finale was still an incredible episode nonetheless. People say, oh, the cliffhanger ruined the whole episode. Like, no, it didn't. The buildup and the tension, it was so good that I had no problem with the cliffhanger after seeing the season seven finale, or premiere, of course. That's my list. That is ranking the top nine seasons in the entirety of The Walking Dead, all nine of them, of course. Let me know your list in the comment section below. Let me know if you disagree with me, and we'll have a nice conversation about it in the comments. Don't forget to check out my if i was a showrunner season 10 writing each episode series that i'm going to be starting soon i'm writing episode one right now i went through like three different drafts i'm really not certain at how i want things to go give me ideas in the comment section below as well i need some ideas for this damn thing hopefully you guys enjoyed the video i'll see you guys in the next one peace out